This gentleman here, he fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. Okay? The heavyweight, yeah. Deontay Wilder, the WBC champion, okay? And boy, he was a big underdog going in. And me included, like everybody, I didn't think he had a chance in the prayer. But he proved everybody wrong, okay? He got dropped four times, but he got up every time, okay? You know, hey, a guy that hits like Deontay Wilder, you don't get up. Well, Spilka found that out the other night. And this guy got up four times from four, you know, brutal punches. And he went on to hurt Deontay Wilder twice. And if he had some more experience, he would have finished him off. <laughs> but that was, you know, he, he hurt him, but he didn't jump on him and, you know, and, and, and finish him off. And he could have been the heavyweight champion of the world. Because in boxing, you know, in the heavyweight division, all it takes is one punch. And Eric had that one punch. He was just this far away from pulling a big upset, a huge upset. So, you know, this, this guy, he's a special person, okay? Not only is he a professional fighter, but he's also a teacher at Academy of East High School, special education. He's got a master's degree, okay? Huh. All right? He don't need to do boxing, all right? And he's there at Economy to helping out kids with special needs, okay? Then he goes home and, you know, like Prado, puts in his work at the gym, you know, the training, the grind, you know, trying, you know, heavyweight's hard to get sparring, so he does what he can to, uh, you know, to get, get the sparring he needs. And like I said, he's the only fighter, probably from Taos, Texas, that fought for the heavyweight title. I can't think of anybody else, but it's not that he fought for the heavyweight title, it's what he did with that opportunity. After that night, everybody knew who Eric Molina was, especially in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. So my next award is for the fight of the year, and that award goes to Eric Molina, drummer boy, Molina. For his courageous performance and, uh, on Showtime. Come on up, Eric. Give a few, give us a few shout outs. Um, first of all, I want to thank, uh, thank God for being so good to me in my career and, and just giving me the, the strength to persevere. Um, I want to thank my wife my family, my team. Um, this is a lot of people to thank. 10 years ago, I was a 22 year old with no boxing experience. Walked in the gym and said, hey, you know what? I want, I want to fight. That's crazy right there. That, that idea to do that is crazy. I remember people telling me, what are you doing, man? You're wasting your time, go home. I got a message to these young kids, and I've told Pablo before. What's the hardest part about boxing? Is it the training? No. It's the walls that you hit. It's, it's the feeling that you get when you go home and you have no reason to continue to fight. I've been there. And all these fighters that, that are here, if they haven't been there yet, you're going you're gonna to go through it. Great special fighters. They react to that in different ways. Um, I'm not saying I'm that fighter, but I've been down, I've lost. I, all I've ever known how to do is bounce back, figure out a way to bounce back. That's all, that's all I can do. In the Wilder fight, everybody counted me out. Everybody counted me out. This guy, he's crazy, he's in it. But I, I stayed confident, um, I trained hard, and I knew that I was, it, was, it was the chance of my life to, to win the heavyweight title of the world. That's the biggest prize in sports. And I'm still after it today. It ain't over yet for me. It's a, a, the only thing I know how to do is bounce back. And here in the valley, I mean, I'm gonna bounce back. That's gonna happen. Now, let's talk about uh, you know you you got went to school, got your BA, now you got your master's, now you're teaching at Economides. Yeah, Economides High School. Yeah. yeah, I'm a special education teacher. Gogi said that I don't need to box. Okay. And he's partially right. It's in my heart to box. I need yeah. it in my life. These fighters out here know what I'm talking about. Everybody that has counted me out from 22, it's been 10 years, the idea of being heavyweight champion of the world from right here from the Rio Grande Valley, the idea to even fight for the heavyweight world title is crazy. So all these young guys here, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're chasing that dream, people are going to tell you, yeah, it's crazy, it's stupid. 
But you know what? You got to believe it here, and you got to follow it with everything in here, and anything's possible. Because I'm still going to get it. I'm going to get that title. Watch. Now, of course, your inspiration to all the kids at the school. What do they say about you fighting? Oh, man, I love the, the students that I work with. Most of them, honestly, don't really understand the concept of boxing, but, you know, the ones that do, they love it. You know, they, they support me. They wear my shirts, and I, I'm very blessed to represent them and my department, special ed at the high school, and I got a great staff. I got administrators that, that push for me and my staff, my coworkers. I mean, it, everybody supports me, and it, it, I'm just very blessed. Now, any shout-outs or, you know, people you want to thank? Of course, because you can't get there by yourself. No, there's no way that, that you could ever get to that position on your own. Um, I never forget everybody that has done things for me. You know, uh, I see Anthony and his wife out here. I started with these guys. These guys created the opportunity for me to fight for the heavyweight world title on, on the car, on the local cards here. Um, South Texas contender for always covering all the fights, all the, the great fights from the Rio Grande Valley. When you talk about a boxing in the country, you, you gotta mention South Texas, you know? Yeah. You know, we, we've already, we have our world champion, uh, Omar. He's, he's blown the door down. You know, I've almost won the heavyweight world title. And this is just the beginning for all these fighters, these youngsters and, and, and the female and, and all these. I mean, the door's blown down, guys. I mean, now the, the road work is set for you guys. I'm a veteran. My days are counted. But for these youngsters here, man, I'm excited for you guys because right here, this area, this is hot. This is, this is the place to be at. You got trainers, you got fans, you got businesses coming together, you got, you got media exposure, this is it. This is everything you need to, to, to chase your dream. Well, Eric, well, Eric, hey, what a great year you had last year, and hey, you got anything coming up? Yeah, I got, I got a really big fight coming up that, that we signed about a week yeah. ago. I'll be headed to Poland to fight Tomasz Adamak, who's oh. ranked number eight in the world by the WBC, and, and, and it's gonna be for some type of like title eliminator, I don't know, something like that. So. Yeah, probably a, a WBC international title that'll get you a top five ranking, I think. Yeah, so we're, we're getting ready for that one, and uh, we're, you know, my back's against the wall, and you know, people wanna count me out, I just keep coming back, and in Poland, April 2nd, you know, that's all I plan on doing. Okay, thank you, Eric, and, and thank you for being an inspiration to all the kids out there, thanks. Oh, the next award goes to, golly, hmm, longest active promoter in Texas, okay? Hey, being a promoter, especially when you're doing it on the club level, meaning you don't get no TV money, you know, like the big promoters, top rank, Golden Boy, you know, they got TV money, uh, they get sponsorship money, so they don't even care about what they sell tickets. Or well, they do, but, you know, it's not a, it's not a priority. Like a guy like Anthony Cavazos, okay, who goes out there, when he puts on these shows, okay, there ain't no TV money, there ain't a lot of sponsorship money, so you pretty much gotta, you know, that's, how, that's what pays the bills. You gotta go out there and hustle these tickets, organize events, and not only that, he's building his fighters into, you know, building them up the ranks, so hopefully one day they could be like Eric Molina, they could be like, you know, Omar, uh, you know, a guy, De La Rosa, uh, who he's built up, okay? Takes a lot of time, effort, and you're putting your money on the line, okay? Every time Anthony does a show, he don't make money. He makes, you know, he does good, but sometimes he takes those losses. I, I've, I've seen him take a few baths, <laughs> but it didn't discourage him. He's continuing to do it, okay? He learned from his mistakes on what to do and what not to do, okay? This guy is consistently, he's the longest active, consistent promoter here in the Rio Grande Valley and in Texas, okay? Because of him, guys like Prado, okay, uh, Mark, Torres, uh, Johnny, the Blaze, Tapia, uh, Brandon fights on his shows. You know, a lot of guys that need Toby Tovar. A lot of these guys that need activity to develop their craft and to build their records up and to build their fan bases up. He, you know, it's because of Anthony. Okay, I always say, everybody asks me, "Hey, Gogi, you know, you know, you know a little bit. But what do you? What makes a great trainer? You know, everybody." You know, Freddie Roach, you know, he's on TV a lot, or, you know, you see uh, Abel Sanchez. Be a good trainer. You got to have a great, you got to have a great fighter. Without a great fighter, I don't care how much you know as a, as a you know, I don't know, I don't care how much you know as a fighter. I, I mean, how, how, how much you know as a trainer. If you ain't got a great fighter, you'll never be a great trainer. But does, it goes further. You got to have a great promoter behind you, okay? Because without a 
great fighter, a great trainer, a great promoter, giving him the opportunity to get those fights and build his career and record up, you're not going to go nowhere. You know what I mean? So it, it takes, it's a, it's a team effort to be a great trainer and a great fighter. The third element is, you know, you got to have a promoter. And you look at every great trainer out there or every great fighter out there, they always have a great promoter behind them. And, you know, this award last year, you know, he was a sportsman, you know, the, the long, uh, I give him an award for this long, meritous service he did for the Rio Grande Valley and to helping these fighters develop. This year he is, uh, you know, 2015 promoter of the year, Anthony Cavazos. Come on up here, Anthony. And Mario Davila, is he here? Oh, he's outside, okay. Yeah, so go ahead and say a few words and talk about your show. I was gonna say a few things. Uh, number one, uh, I wouldn't be in boxing if I didn't love boxing. It ain't for everybody. <laughs> I'm a good, good friend, Danny Castaneda. Uh, it's, a, it's not a sport for everybody. If, number one, if you, like I said, if you don't love boxing, don't even start with it. Whether you're a trainer, fighter, promoter, don't even start the business because it's a, it's a tough business and sometimes people are not loyal. It's a, it's, you know that more than I do. But, you know, uh, my wife helps me tremendously. Without my wife's help, I never would have made it. But, uh, you know, for all the years with Golden Boy, with Omar, working with Omar Figueroa, great fighter, world champion, at 135 pounds, and uh, we did four years with Golden Boy, top rank. And when I started, I started learning from the bottom by myself. And nobody wanted to help, but over the years, we got uh, bigger and stronger. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, come on and support the boxing. Not only supporting me, because I'll, I'll do it without anybody's help, but for the fighters here in the Valley that are uh, all warriors. To me, they're all warriors because it takes a special person to get in the ring and, and fight on uh, fight night. But thanks again, Gogi, and uh, South Texas Contender, my good friend Martin Solis, and everybody for coming out. Thank you. Okay. And of course, we got to give special thanks to Martin, yeah. owner where we're doing this show at, Stormy Colors Bar and Grill, over here in Far Texas, the number one sports bar and a restaurant here in, the, you know, this side of the town over here in Far. So thank you, Martin. And he also, I made a mistake, he does, he's one of the few guys that did help out uh, JP. <laughs> so keep on continuing to help him out every time he needs something. But thank you, Anthony. Uh, he's got a show March 11th. Talk about it real quick. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great show. Uh, find out, like I said, we got eight fights, good fights. You know, I'm number one, also, I'm a boxing fan. We don't want to see people have too many lopsided fights, you know, uh, where you know the red corner is going to win, no. At Cavazos Boxing, you're going to see wars. That's where we change it to border wars. And uh, guys like Omar, uh, Brandon, JP, Eric Molina, all these fighters come to fight. And uh, if you want to see fights, you got to come on March 11th. Tickets are going fast, as usual. Uh, I'm not happy until the place is completely sold out. Uh, that's just the way in. But, you know, that's you got to be competitive in any business you do. If you're not going to be competitive, you're never going to make it in life. So, uh... Come and buy tickets, support the local boxing, and, and in the show tickets, I can't believe the ticket sales are going through the roof, but uh, get get early because the lines start uh, at 6 o'clock. The last time I looked at the door, the last fight was a half a mile line long, and I tell people to buy them early, they think I'm just promoting, which I am, but uh, but the place gets packed. So if you want a good seat too, get them early so you can enjoy Tapia, JP, Toby Tavar. Uh, and all the other fighters, Mark Torres, there's a whole list of fighters, they're good fighters. Right now, the boxing here in the Rio Grande Valley is a hotbed for boxing. Guys like De La Rosa, which I started from the bottom, Eric Molina, uh, these guys started with me here in the Valley. Uh, and then, uh, you know, all these fighters coming up, Omar Figueroa, we, we teamed up with Golden Boy. The shows were crazy, record, record ticket sales. And Omar did, terrific, did a terrific job helping me promote those fights. But, uh, you know, it's been crazy. But get your tickets early. Come enjoy the fights. And thanks for everybody coming out. In the last part of this second part of our show, okay, let me talk about this guy, okay? I trained him, I don't know, for five years, you know. Uh, when I started the gym, uh, we had the gym over there in uh, 
over there in Far, Texas, and we had a good little run over there, okay? Uh, this gentleman, oh, we had our ups and downs. <laughs> but just like fighters, you know, and trainers, you know, sometimes, you know, you clash on ideas and everything. And, you know, I'm not going to change. You know, I got my ideas on the way things get done. And, <laughs> and Raw, well, he was something to deal with. But, hey, guess what? He was good for boxing here because, number one, he always left it in the ring, okay? He never, uh, what do you call it, uh, every time he went in the ring, you know, he always gave it his all, okay? Uh, number two, he was always respectful to all the fans out there, okay? Every fan out there, he was never rude or uh, disrespectful or, you know, uh, stuck his nose up at him. You know, you know, if you wanted to take a picture with him, you want an autograph, you want to call him, he was very cordial and friendly. Uh, you know, he's been in the boxing scene since he was uh, 12 years old, I'd say, Tigre. 12 years old, okay? And, but the, you know, another most important thing, you know, he was a promoter's dream. Every time he fought, he's, you know, for me, this is no lie, he would sell up to $20,000 of tickets. Yeah, literally. And not only that, he would go collect the tickets. You know, Omar Figueroa knows how hard that is. You know, you, 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 you tell people, hey, you want to buy tickets? Yeah, okay, you got to go to their house. You might have to go to there three times, <laughs> but you go there and get the money, each one, okay, that buys tables and everything. That's hard. Now, you look at Al Heyman fighters, none of them can sell tickets, a lot of them. But, you know, you got a guy like Tigre, you know, <laughs> he sells, you know, you know, for the local promoters, man, you know, it's, he takes a lot of relief off him because, like I said, these local promoters don't have TV dates with TV money or big-time sponsors. You know, they go out for ticket sales, and it's the – you know, not only the uh, promoter's responsibility to push these tickets, but guys like Tigre, okay? That's what makes boxing su successful. He won the WBO uh, youth title for me, the middleweight title, back in, what, 2010 in Kissimmee, Florida. Pulled a big upset over there against a guy that was from that area, and they almost ripped us off when, you know, Tigre won the fight visibly. It was on pay-per-view. It was probably his best performance, but to me, I thought it's most exciting for not only that was that fight, but the fight we did in Edinburgh, Texas. See, when I got Tigre, he wasn't a big ticket seller. But over the years, I kept him over here and kept on, it's called consistency, you know. Kept on fighting him over there. I got fight, I got offers to fight everybody. I, I got fight, offers to fight everywhere else. But I wanted to keep him here because I learned from Hall of Fame promoter Don Chargan. If you want to develop, develop a ticket seller, you got to consistently fight him in your market. And that's what I did with Tigre. Four round stage, he was doing all right. By the time he got to the 10 round stage, he was doing 15 to 20. And Anthony, you know that. <laughs> That's hard for, you know, not too many fighters do that. Omar's a rare, you know, Omar Sr. is one of the rare guys that goes out and pushes these tickets. So, you know, for the local boxing scene, you know, that fight with uh, Elor Suarez, it was over 3,000 packed at Edinburgh uh, Municipal Park. Oh, it was a hell of a fight. And Tigre, Took some shortcuts in training and it paid for him in the fight, but you know, he sucked it up going into that sixth round and stopped him. It was an exciting fight. Uh, the crowd went uh, crazy and it was so packed. By the time it was a co main event, they ran out of beer and concessions. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, they were pissed off over there. <laughs> so, t you know, Tigre was responsible for that, you know, that big turnout and everything. He was, a, you know, he was, he, he grew to be a big attraction over here, uh, you know, locally, and that's what you want. That's, you know, that's one of the reasons why I moved to the Valley is, that, you know, get guys like TGD and develop him and, you know, and grow the market with guys like him and always gave good fights, you know what I mean? When he was in shape, man, you know, he, he was a tough out. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was a very tough out for anybody, but this year's, you know, winner of the Sportsman of the Year, I got, you know, one of my ex-fighters, he just retired, uh, thank God, now he's uh, in the training aspect of boxing. Now he works with uh, Carlos. Carlos. Okay, the UFC, the only UFC fighter in the Valley right now? Yeah. Okay, the only fighter from USC in the Valley. Yeah, he's a trainer of him now in the boxing part, not the MMA. Oh, okay. yeah. So I'd like to present this next gentleman with a war for Sportsman of the Year 2015. For all TV <laughs> First of all, I want to thank uh, South Texas Contender and uh, Stormy Colors, Martin, always there for me since day one, man. He's always been there for me uh, since before one WBO, since before Stormy Colors was open. Great man. Thank you. And uh, second of all, where were you guys all those years I was winning, man? 
eight years unbeaten, never got an award. In my last five fights, I lost four, getting an award. Uh, I want to thank everybody, man. The Valley, the Valley fans, best fans in boxing, MMA. Uh, it's been great, great sport. I wasn't so great to it. I wish I was. Maybe it would have been different. Uh, but like I said, uh, I just want to thank everybody, man. I'm great, grateful for all of this. And uh, there's life after boxing. I'm working with Diego Ferreira now. He just uh, put uh, Ferreira or Ferreira. Okay, I'm working with Carlos now. Uh, he pulled up a big win in uh, Newark, New Jersey this weekend. It was awesome, man. Had a bunch of fun. And I'm going to be working with Michael Rodriguez, legacy fighter. Be working with him. You're going to hear a lot about him in the near future. Uh, thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, TJ. That concludes part two. Take a little five minute break. Uh, one second. Martin, owner of uh, Stormy Colors Bar and Grill, he has something to say. First of all, thanks for being here. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity for Fred to be here. Hopefully, to keep continue being here, start with Stormy Cup Park Grill. And uh, with any further ado, I'd like for you to present to you the mayor of Par, Ambrosio Hernandez. Congratulations, a great event. RGB Boxing, of course, awards, it's outstanding. Um, for the contenders and the winners, everybody here, all you guys are training, you know, we have uh, some things that are in common. Number one, anything well, worth doing takes time and effort and a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice. So we all come from different backgrounds. We all have humble beginnings. We all started off at some point with our family behind us, hopefully all the time, but not always. And despite your background, despite your financial crisis or stresses in your life, clearly you can rise to be champions. And sports is a great way of doing it. And so I want to commend you guys. I'm very excited to be here with you guys, ladies and gentlemen, for the Boxing and the UFC Awards. You guys deserve it. Keep it in your heart. Stay as champions. Don't let anything get in your way. And the sky's the limit. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor of Texas. Thank you. So we're concluding this segment. Give us a five-minute break, then we'll wrap it up. Fighter of the year, trainer of the year, prospect of the year. Thank you. <laughs>